title story from my little collection, How I Got My Dog. One day I opened the door at the old Fairview School, and there he was, standing on my front stoop, a huge white dog with glistening shiny white teeth and paws the size of my fist. Quickly I closed the door. I telephoned my neighbors Donna and Stu. What's the story on this big dog wandering around outside? I don't know, Donna said. I found him out there earlier this morning. Well, will he bite? No, he's nice. I gave him some food. The dog leaned against my screen door, tongue out, panting. Okay, I thought. I'll give him some water. Instantly, we were friends. He following me around, bounding up the hill toward the barn while I did my chores. He chased a frisbee and caught it in midair. He chased rabbits out of the garden and barked when a strange car pulled into the driveway. He even killed a snake coiled up on the road. This is a good dog, I thought. He belongs to somebody and soon they'll come and claim him. But several days went by and no one did. Now Donna, Stu said one night, discerned that they were acquiring yet another mouse to feed. I hope Mary's not feeding that dog. Several more days passed and the dog was getting the knack of the place sweeping under my porch during the heat of the day and racing across the yard to meet Donna and Stu when they came home from their jobs in town. Finally, one Saturday afternoon, Henry Yutsey, one of our Amish neighbors, pulled in the lane in his buggy. I see you have Bear, Henry said, tying his horse to the hitching post. Bear? Donna asked. Yeah, we had him for a while. Oh, is this your dog, Henry? Well, not exactly. It turns out Bear was a dump. He had probably grown too big for some student apartment in town, so he was driven to the country and thoughtlessly set loose to fend for himself. The local feed and seed dealer found him and kept him in the shop for a while. Then knowing that Henry's German Shepherd had recently died, the feed man loaded Bear in his truck and drove him to the Yussie. Henry's eight children romped with the dog and rode him around the yard, his tail wagging, the little Amish boys hanging on to their straw hats. But Henry's wife thought the dog too big and unruly and wasn't chagrined when he wandered down the road. He slept a couple of nights in our neighbor Malin's welding shop. In the mornings when Malin milked the cows, Bear slipped into the barn and nudged the farmer's hand. Malin stopped and petted him, but finally found the dog a nuisance. Go away now, Malin said. Tail down, Bear drifted across the road to Moses and Miriam's farm. To get out of the rain, he crept up on their front porch and sat down next to their glider. Just then, Miriam came to the door. The sight of the huge white dog frightened her. Go home, she shouted in English, but Bear didn't budge. Get Hank! She scolded in Dutch. The bear still didn't move. Because the dog didn't seem to understand either language, Miriam shooed him away with a newspaper. Now, Henry, Donna said, if that's your dog, you go ahead and take him. Well, why don't we just let him be a neighborhood dog, Henry said, moving back to his buggy. I think we ought to settle this. I think we ought to settle this. Stu said. All right, Donna said. I'll tell you what. Henry, you get back in your buggy, and if that dog jumps in with you, he's your dog. If he stays here, we'll share him with Mary. Good enough, Henry said. He hopped into his buggy and turning to the dog said, Stay, bear.